I've already made two separate videos breaking down my disappointments with CD Projekt Red's much anticipated Cyberpunk 2077. But the game isn't all bad, in fact often it's quite good. If we set aside the hype, the duplicitous marketing, and the political opportunism, there's still a pretty alright game underneath. So in my last video on Cyberpunk 2077, here's what I actually liked about the game. I liked the different districts of Night City, how differently they felt from one another. The devs did a great job in making the city feel huge and dense. In other games, you can feel like the center of the universe, but here it always feels like you're just a tiny moat in a great tempest. The scanner should eventually sync with your thought processes and read your intentions. I also injected an NCPD file search. Run into any ne'er do wells? <laughs> you know exactly what they ne'er did well. I also appreciated the scanner, which gives every NPC their own name, and if they have a criminal record, a whole lifetime of transgressions for you to learn. This makes them feel like their own people, who don't only exist for your benefit, even if I can't say the same for the buggy, generally poor AI. I also loved what Cyberpunk 2077 does with language. Some people may dislike it, but for me, all the new speak goes a long way towards fleshing out this near future setting, humanizing it even. Through it, we see for ourselves how the conditions that this society faces daily have subtly altered how it talks and arguably, by extension, thinks. As an open world, I appreciate how much there is to find in Night City off the beaten path. What may have felt especially new is the devs' use of verticality. There's stuff to find in places tucked not only behind corners or down alleyways, but high atop and even inside skyscrapers, apartment buildings, and the like. Now one thing I don't think works too well is ironically the double-edged sword of how full to the brim that Night City is with side activities. It can feel cluttered and overwhelming when, in the process of doing one job, I accidentally stumble onto another, or three. That being said though, the game does deserve praise for how no side hustle, no matter how trivial, fails to come with its own name and story to set the scene. Cyberpunk 2077 is the full realization, perhaps, of that famous ending line from the procedural 1948 noir classic The Naked City. There are 8 million stories in The Naked City, and this is one of them. Yo, V. Got a guy looking to be extracted out of NC pronto, or else it's his funeral. Need me a decent driver who won't shit their pants when things get hairy. What do you think? Check the spec. I also like how the game at least tried to feature little details. Sometimes when I would shoot an enemy in the arm, they would drop their gun. Running into boulders would break them apart, while slamming into a divider can sometimes send debris flying. And this attention to detail, however unevenly implemented in free play, really reasserts itself during cutscenes. Usually facial expressions and character animations are exquisite in this game. And maybe my favorite of all of what the game has to offer or the brain dances. These were recorded lived experiences more exactly recallable and relivable than any memory. Here too, attention to detail, at least on paper, can feel striking as you shuffle through a recording across thermal, auditory, and visual registers to track down some telltale clue. Speaking of clues, I really appreciated the hard-boiled detective elements in this game, though I thought it could have maybe used a bit more of them. It's probably the best implementation I've ever seen of that genre in an open world. There also weren't a lot of reused interiors or repeat NPCs that I could find. And guns feel distinct, yet equally satisfying. I was also impressed by the many, many car interiors, though unfortunately the somewhat busted first person driving made appreciating these details for very long unwise. And this is kind of like the cluttered world map. Different features that work fine on their own don't always come together well in Cyberpunk 2077. Another example here might be cyberware. I love all the different implants you can buy, but because you can only swap them out by visiting a ripper dock, making good tactical use of the differences isn't really doable. You have to know exactly what you'll need ahead of time, which isn't always feasible or convenient. Some kind of changeable loadout would have been much better. 
I also thought it was cool how each side mission comes from the district's fixer, your contact as a freelancer for getting new jobs. The way most of them had nothing to do with the main story, again, helped make Night City feel a bit bigger, like it didn't only exist just for you. The Cyber Psychos side quests were kind of fun too. They provided a nice change of pace where I was never really sure what kind of crazy bastard I'd have to fight next. I would have preferred more ways of talking my way through a mission, but in general, I like the RPG flavored dialogue choices and mission routes. Thinking's a bit tedious and wonky, but it was cool to case a joint by hijacking the cameras and trying to tag everyone inside before going in, even if this felt mildly derivative of Watch Dogs. The guns feel really nice, and there's a lot of variety. I enjoyed the different types of weaponry overall. Ricochet, smart bullets, and charged shots added some fun complexity to what may be for me the most repetitious and sometimes flat out boring part of the game, combat. Same goes for all the throwables. Now, if combat situations actually required tactful use of these weapons, and weren't so frequent, I think the game would be vastly improved. And because it's a half-looter shooter, it was kind of time-consuming and boring to have to sort through every single new gun after a big shootout. Selling them gives so many eddies that you'd be crazy not to grab as many guns as you can. But for me, that just meant I wound up with like three or four main guns I stuck with throughout most of the game, and seemingly hundreds of guns that I'd sell right after getting them. The combat shotgun and sniper rifle were, for me, so effective against pretty much every enemy that I never felt too driven to experiment more. But other options are there, and that's at least, in theory, nice. A lot of the character writing in this game is stellar, too. CD Projekt Red may be the best in the industry, or at the very least better than Rockstar, at including sex and romance in their open-world games. I could have used a lot more of this, but what little we got is still superior than anything similar that Rockstar has tried in GTA. I also appreciated the gay and lesbian romance options, and how both of them were handled with surprising sincerity and sweetness. Speaking of sweetness, I also loved the friendship between V and Jackie. I played as a nomad, because I'm a bit of a nomad in real life, and how Jackie took me in was genuinely heartwarming. I really enjoyed the first act of this game, up until the point most of the characters that I'd grown to like were taken out of the picture to make room for Keanu Reeves. I've already said in other videos I'm not a huge fan of Johnny Silverhand in this game, but I will say I do like the concept of his digitized consciousness crammed into my body along with mine. It's one of the few things for me that felt not merely a redux of cyberpunk, but a contribution to it. Several quests were also top-notch cyberpunk stories that really put the shallow sci-fi in Fallout 4 to shame. Much like in The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077 has a lot of follow-up quests that flow very organically, and this helped make Night City a bit more believable, as it made it feel like quest-giving NPCs had lives and stories of their own that were going on without us. And I have to say I liked the creativity on display with how the game applied this genre to something we haven't seen before, in the form of SoCal's multi-ethnic population. I liked the Haitian and Mexican parts of town, and how you could get a sense of distinct cultures there. And not just there, but in each of Night City's many districts. I really could have used more Fallout New Vegas stuff in terms of the factions, so that say working with one would piss off their enemies, but broadly, I did like how many different gangs and groups there were, and how differently they dressed and spoke. All in all, Cyberpunk 2077 may not be the game many of us thought we'd be getting. It isn't typically that revolutionary or game-changing, but it does consistently improve on the influences that it draws from. There were plenty of times I had to roll my eyes or just felt bored, but when Cyberpunk 2077 works, even I have to admit that it works well. Until next time, boss.